good evening to all of you. And uh, this is the topic which I love to uh, expound upon on AI. And uh, let me show you, I missed a slide there, uh, but you must have seen it. Uh, that was we, the underlying, the homo sapiens, right? And there was a guy coming up very fast in the background, we call it artificial super intelligence. Okay, and that is something which we need to understand uh, during this uh, whole conversation which we are having. So if you look at uh, this, uh, they say a lot of statements are there. One of the statements is that we are summoning the daemon, that is Elon Musk. Now, what does it mean? It means that the daemons will be coming, rakshas are hain, and what they do when rakshas aate hain, right? They eat us, up, eat us up. That is what AI is being denoted as. And uh, scientists, business people, the top, even Bill Gates recently came out and he said that why can't we understand it? Baat hame samaj mein kyun nahi aa rahi hai? So let us, and but what I believe is the last line, uh, there are uh, numerous people who has come out that this is the final invention, we have done, the, we have pulled the black ball out and all that. But what I believe is in the human resilience, that is the last line, if you are able to see that line, okay, uh, that human resilience is this that if we understand the problem, probably we'll put up better controls around it uh, to uh, take it to the next level, okay? So if you believe that AI is not around you, let me tell you AI is all around you, gentlemen. The way we do business, the way we socialize, okay? Everything what we are doing today, you watch Netflix, AI is there, it, uh, the recommendation engine is based on AI. Uh, you are on the Google, Google even takes you half search out and he knows exactly what you have been planning to do it. Chat GPT has reached homes. I was talking to one of the gentlemen, uh, your chairman, and his mother, eight years old, she's using Chat GPT. So this is the first time AI has reached home now, right? You all are using it at one point of time or other. You are using Chat GPT actively. So AI has started reaching out. Every industry you look at, everywhere AI is there. Okay, I'll give you one example, the way we do business. Uh, you know you are doing shopping on Amazon, right? What is the model? The model is the shop and ship, right? You go on Amazon, you like a thing and you shop it, you pay for that and then they will send it to your home. But mind it, if you look at that, you will find out that even if you five, uh, buy five products on Amazon, five different people will come and deliver it to you. So there is a huge logistics burden, okay, for on them. So that burden they are trying to reduce by leveraging AI. And by the way, Amazon is one of the biggest cloud providers with cognitive services, they call it, that is AI, okay? They are using it. So what they are doing is, they are changing the model from shop and ship to ship and shop. And they are sharing data. The companies like Google, companies like IBM, Microsoft, they are sharing data. They have got a strategy, they call it AI first strategy. So they are sharing data. So they will know exactly what product you are liking it, and AI can predict that, that when you are going to buy that, what's your income, what kind of quality of products you are buy, going to buy. And then one fine day you will wake up, you will open your door, you will find a box in front of you, you will open the box and you will find all those things you plan to buy that day is available into that box. You will take out that you want, leave others and Amazon will, one single guy will come and he will collect all the boxes from that society and go away. You will be billed for what you have taken out. Okay, so they are changing the model from shop and ship to ship and shop, leveraging AI. That is what is happening, okay? That is something which we need to realize. Now, this is, uh, I call that a great decoupling, which has happened over a period of time. You know, the human productivity, we have written everything, same level five, six sigma, ISO 27001, and what has happened is, the human productivity has now still, it has reached a peak, okay? We are not going beyond that. But capital intensive in, uh, uh, productivity is still increasing. So if you look at the graph on the right hand side, you will see that the capital intensive productivity is based on software, uh, softwares like robot process automations or robotics and all those, those automations we are talking about, that is the capital intensive productivity, it is rising rapidly, okay. Every organization is changing their tack and moving towards more and more automation. So I'll give you one example, a Volkswagen factory in Munich, once upon a time they had 50,000 people working in that factory. Today they have automated so much that only 5,000 people are working in that factory. They have been producing a car in 36 days with 50,000 people. Now they are producing a car every 3.6 days, okay. So they're, they're the whole due to automation or capital intensive productivity that has gone up. Now this is, 
no, bringing another change, you know what has happened due to this is also that the currently 10% of the population in this world has got 90% of the money in their hands. And with AI now walking in, this automation is now taking another critical jump. Okay? Now, what will happen is with AI and the base, the automation which is based on AI, three things will happen. Okay? The terms of trade will change. Okay? First, the skilled workers will be uh, sifted out. Second, the investment which is flowing in, they will look for you that how much automation you have achieved. And depending upon it, you will get automation. Okay? The third which will critically happen is, if you remember some point of time, there was a days when uh, the Google and all used to come and ask, Amazon even, they used to come and ask, the, do you employ child labor? You said, yes, I employ child labor, they will not buy from you. Now that is what the AI is bringing, another four, where they will come and ask, do you employ humans? And you say, yes, they'll say, hey, guys, we'll not invest in you, we'll not buy from you, okay? So the time is coming to that. But it will also bring in another, or income inequality, and that will be that uh, basically 99% of the people will be left out only 1% of the money, 1% of the population, be it a corporate, be it a country, they will be having the 99% of the money in their hands globally. Okay? So there is a drastic change. And countries like India, okay, where that substitutability will be there, they will not sustain this drive. Okay? Because we depend upon the manual labor or the cost arbitrage much more. So we will not sustain it. So that is very, very critical for us to understand and ensure that this technology makes a soft landing. Look at this, I will not delve much more into that, but basically what I wanted to tell you, the age you are living in, gentlemen, all of you, is a narrow intelligence age, artificial narrow intelligence age. AI is, is virtually at a narrow intelligence, it's a machine learning world. Very soon we are entering into age, we call it artificial general intelligence, where AI will be working as good as us on data set, or it will be unstructured data set, just like us, we have got these five senses, we work on unstructured data, make our own reality, AI will be doing that. Second, do not forget, currently AI forgets, if you teach him to drive car and then to fly a plane, it will forget about driving a car. Okay? So that we call it a catastrophic failure or catastrophic forgetfulness, that is current technology is, but very soon they will be overcoming that and it will be like us, we do not forget, we learn upon our tasks which we have learned earlier. Right? We build upon our experiences, AI will be doing that. And it is everywhere currently. Okay? So all those things which can be optimized and there is not a lot of creativity and strategy is needed, AI is going to take over. You know, Industrial Revolution 1.0, it happened due to steam. We Indians were not party to it. It happened in Europe. Okay? They developed machine guns, steam ships, railway engines. And the resultant, you know what was? The resultant, we were slaves for 200 years. Right. 2.0 happened, it happened due to, you can see the electricity, it created the great divide, the developed nations and underdeveloped country. We are still a developing nation. 3.0, it happened due to computing and that is where we caught up. Okay, and I remember I was in US in Atlanta, went to take a house and the, the lady asked me and when I told her I am a software engineer, an Indian and a software engineer, she said, oh, you are a smarty, that's the slang in US. Okay, so they woke up to the fact that Indians are a smarter people. Okay. 4.0, which is happening now, gentlemen, it is happening due to intelligence, that is AI. If we are not party to it, probably we are looking at this time of perpetual servitude. We'll have food on our table. IBM calls it precision agriculture. Okay? So it will sow the seed, it will grow it up, it will reap it, it will process it and cook the food and bring it on your table. Okay? And uh, you will have autonomous cars, so you can travel anywhere you want autonomous planes and autonomous cars and whatnot, you will travel anywhere. One thing you will be missing, your generation or probably the next generation, and that is swayata, that is freedom to make decisions. So that is, we have to understand and ensure that this technology makes a soft landing. I mean, the countries or corporations which they develop, the next level of technology, the AGI and ASI, we also need to ensure that we also develop those technologies and those capabilities, which is not there in India today. We are more like what we do, maximum startups which we have or maximum organizations which we have is basically knuckle. We believe in that. We are a service organization. We believe in that. We are not coming out on our own, our products, our thought process, our innovations. We are not coming out. One aspect which we also want to point it out to you guys, that the current technology set, the level of technology of AI, we do around 26 quadrillion computations per second in our brain. Okay? That is our brain. This is cranial. 
a super computer like Fukugawa or Hunan one in China, it does around 32 quadrillion computations per second. Okay, so there is a big gap, but you know this comparison does not end. We cannot download the human brain to silicon currently, because we consume only 20 watts or Fukugawa can consumes around 24 megawatts. We require only this cranial, but a Fukugawa probably uh, or supercomputer that requires 724 square meter of space, that is two bedroom apartments, seven of them. So the technology is not there, but one technology which is coming in, gentlemen, is the quantum computing. It is fast coming in. Already we have reached, you must have read about the Google achieving um, uh, a supremacy in quantum. Okay, this quantum technology, a 100 qubits quantum computer is more powerful than a supercomputer. What a supercomputer can do in 475 years, it does in 7 seconds. Okay, so that technology is coming in very, very fast and it will generate a new breed of AI, we call it quantum AI. Right? So the prediction is by 2030, you will not get driving licenses. Okay? And by 2050 odd, you will not know who is sitting next to you. He is a humanoid or you, it is a human. You will not even be able to differentiate it. And if you want to see that, go to YouTube, you will watch Sophia. You must have known or seen Sophia already. Right? So she is humanoid. She can make sarcastic faces, laugh with you and all. So we are already on the technical technological singularity. We have achieved that. There is no coming back, oh guys. We need to prepare and we need to work with this technology as much as we can. Now, one thing uh, which we also need to understand is that uh, the intelligence superiority, where where how, how this quantum AI will change the things and why we should be very very careful about it. You know, the most intelligent species on this earth is humans. Okay, we operate between 90 to 140 IQ level. You cannot go to a gorilla which operates around 30 to 40 IQ level and go and explain algebra to him or trigonometric theorem to him. You can't do that, right? But you know when this, the whole biological range of in the intelligence which is there, the AI or artificial general intelligence which is right probably only few years now, okay, that will operate at 5000 IQ level. Artificial super intelligence which is equal to the collective human intelligence, it will operate with around of 12,500 IQ level, they will be God, gentlemen, virtually. Okay? We have to understand that they do not make perverse instantiations and that is most a fearful aspect of AI that the kind of technology level it achieves, it can make perverse instantiation. Like I will give you an example. You go and ask AI, probably artificial uh, super intelligence which operate 12,500 IQ level that bhai, why do not you finish off hunger from this earth? He may decide, hey, who gets hungry? Humans? Why not obliterate humans and the hunger will go away? That is a perverse instantiation. We have to ensure that the ethical values we human carry, the AI also carries. Whatever level it reaches, the general intelligence, super intelligence level, it needs to. Okay? So, AI takeoff is imminent, gentlemen. It will help us from the war, famine, disease which we are suffering today. It will help us to go to become from homo sapiens to homo deus. We will be talking about immortality, happiness and divinity. Okay? Google has gone ahead and established a company, they call it Calico. You must have heard about it. right? Calico is working on the immortality factor, leveraging AI for immortality. On technologies like uh, genetic engineering, technologies like CRISPR, it is working towards immortality. Okay? But AI is being leveraged there. So some of these things we have to understand, we have to say it. The most, third most important aspect, we cannot depend upon that AI will be there and we will buy it out from that. Let me give you an example. One, whenever developed nations or countries or corporations, when they achieve a decisive strategic advantage, they deny the technology to us. Okay? So they achieve nuclear bomb, they put it on Nagasaki, Hiroshima, they realized it is a decisive strategic advantage, they signed a non-proliferation treaty. We took 32 years to India to develop its own nuclear capability. 1974 Pokhran. Okay, they developed ICBM, IRBM, satellite, Star Wars. They ensured that the ban on cryogenic engine is put in place. It took 25 years to us to develop our own rocket engine. Now they are developing Thanos, the, single, the singleton. That is AI, artificial super intelligence. You know what Thanos is, right? So now they are developing that. We have to ensure that we are also standing and marching with them because once they achieve the decisive strategic advantage, we will be disadvantaged. So there will be no catching up, gentlemen. Uh, you look at the top 100 startups in AI, none of them are in India. China is catching up very, very fast. US is making more than $3 trillion investment into it. 
And, and China is doing an, another set of investment of around $187 billion into AI. So we have to ensure that we wake up to this fact and ensure that we join hands, we work and take it to the next level uh, pretty quickly. So jobs at risk, every job below 60K is at risk now. Okay, uh, the jobs which can be optimized, the jobs which can be, which is not creative and strategic in nature, AI is going to step in and take it. You must have seen this guy, Putin, is very, very, uh, look at his statement, he made it, that Lord, it, uh, the AI investment is very, very critical and the countries who will make that investment in AI, they will rule the world. That is what they are planning to, that is where they are going to, okay. Look at the investment which US and China is making. The most important, they have got a site, they call it Partnership on AI. Companies like Google, Apple, IBM, they have all made hands, Microsoft. They have adopted a strategy, they call it AI first strategy. What has happened suddenly with this kind of investment being made and a strategy being adopted, okay? AI in China has already gone ahead in making publications which is quite ahead. So what I believe, India is po poised, we have got everything, you guys are there, the smarter generation is there with us. We need to ensure that we also participate, ensure that this technology makes a soft landing, we are part of it and not only we take a lead into it and really become a Vishu Guru into this. Thank you.